A stormy weather pattern is about to ruin a lot of plans, not just irregular weekday plans, but also, of course, involving the eclipse, as we're going to have impacts to the viewing as a result of lots of areas seeing clouds. This video has all the details on the upcoming severe weather pattern and the upcoming eclipse, so stick around. One Nation Weather. Thank you so much for being here with me at One Nation Weather. Many of the maps in this video are from Weather Belt. Trial link below in the description to that. And if you find value in this video, just a quick reminder to please hit that subscribe button so I can deliver more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand weather predictions to you. The timestamps on screen are also in the description, but if you want to get more details on the in-depth eclipse forecast and severe weather discussion, skip ahead to those times that were just shown, again, or in the description so you can get right to those. But let's take a look at the upcoming weather pattern first. As we head towards Monday afternoon, right as the eclipse is happening, upper Midwest showers, some snow back into Wyoming, not going to be able to see the eclipse there. And many areas along this frontal line that I just drew out are not going to see the eclipse either, as we're going to have a lot of low clouds along it, even if there's not much precipitation, unless you're down there in the parts of South Central Texas and Louisiana. You can see as we go late Monday night going into our Tuesday here, April 9th in the early morning, probably some big hail going on in especially parts of Oklahoma and Texas out of these storms. Other areas of Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama getting in on at least some regular to maybe marginally severe thunderstorm activity. Activity. Tuesday during the day, we're going to notice some storms continue to push into parts of the Ohio Valley, Appalachia, parts of the East Coast. But overall, we're going to be watching these cells back on over still into parts of Oklahoma, Texas, even southwestern Arkansas and Louisiana once again, as likely big hail and maybe even all else severe weather hazards will get going as a new low pressure system forms down here closer to the Gulf Coast by Wednesday, probably elevating the severe weather threat here through southern Arkansas, most of Mississippi into parts of Louisiana as well, even places like Memphis, Tennessee, looking to be on the edge of that risk. Also notice what's helping to support and bring up a lot of this moisture is this lingering upper level low down here in the parts of southern Canada. That's the one that's been in the upper Midwest. It brought those 70 mile an hour wind gusts on Saturday to parts of Nebraska. It's helping to bring up that southerly flow and support. Ultimately, this system, as it continues along the Gulf Coast with some severe weather into places like Alabama, Georgia, the western Florida panhandle, probably towards our late Wednesday going into an early Thursday, according to this model. Um, other areas here in the parts of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, at least getting in on some rain at this point. That's another concern, especially as you go through Louisiana, Arkansas, M Mississippi, and even into Alabama and surrounding areas. Probably some very heavy rain and a elevated flood concern as a result of that. By the time we go towards Thursday afternoon, looking like areas like um, North Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas getting under a severe threat, we'll also watch on up there closer to the Great Lakes for some continual rainfall. On the back end of the storm system here, late Thursday going into Friday, we'll continue to watch severe storm potential closer to Appalachia and the East Coast. Overall, though, once we get past Thursday, we'll begin to see this overall now expansive and probably windy storm system along the East Coast at least kind of move on out. We're going to start to see the impacts really kind of get more confined to parts of the Ohio Valley in the Northeast where we normally see things wrap up. So through the day Friday, that's where we'll see most of the impacts other than wind push on out in addition to some storms maybe as well as we go late Friday going into Saturday there over parts of the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast. Now taking a look at your eclipse overview, again if you want to talk more about severe weather, skip ahead to that earlier shown timestamp. For our Monday, April 8th, 2024, we've obviously got totality that's going to make its way from parts of Southwest Texas all the way on up there to Cleveland, Ohio, and then into parts of northern Maine as well. That totality line is where 100% of the sun will be eclipsed by the moon, of course, if you don't know what an eclipse is. And then you can see around the rest of the United States, we've obviously got at least some percentage of totality. And in all those zones, you need to be wearing those glasses. Unless you're in the totality region, right when the sun is 100% covered, that's when you can take off the glasses and see the full effect. Now, using your NASA eclipse tracker here to kind of time this out, you can see around 1.30 p.m. Central Time, that's when we're seeing this cross out of Mexico here into southwest Texas, Crystal City on up to Caraville between about 1.30 central time and 1.35 in a place like Caraville. That's where you're going to be seeing the best totality there. Um, north of San Antonio, right if you get into those northern outskirts of town, that's where you're going to get into the totality there. So the moon will fully eclipse the sun there, at least briefly. Again, the closer you get to the edge of this black line, that's where you're starting to get into the territory of it will just be a very brief full eclipse. 1.40 p.m. Central Time, that's where we're going to see places like Fort Worth and Dallas, the southern suburbs all the way down there to Waco, Kailin, those areas, that's where we're going to see that eclipse making its way through there. 
around 141, 142, 143, places like Fort Worth, Dallas, getting touched by this. Full totality is going to make its way towards places like Sulphur Springs, um, as we head towards Mount Pleasant as well, all the way on up there to far northern parts of Texas around 145 p.m. Central Time. Again, these are broad estimates for most areas here. Through southeast Oklahoma, it's going to be 146, 147. That's when we're going to see this cross into parts of Arkansas as well. Louisiana, the totality is just missing you, but if you travel on up there to places like Little Rock, it is going to be impacting that area just around 150 and thereafter. Places like Hot Springs, the eclipse will begin for you in its full totality around 150, continuing to Little Rock around 151, 152 there in Central Time. We'll continue to see Little Rock at least briefly get the full effect of this. Then places like Mountain View there in Arkansas, even far south central Missouri getting in on the totality closer to 155 central time. And we're going to continue to see this progress to, towards the northeast, and it is going to be speeding up a little bit. And the length of the full totality will be getting shorter as it continues to head on off towards the east coast. Southern Missouri and southeastern Missouri here into Cape Girardeau region, as well as Poplar Bluff. It's going to be close to around 2, 201 here at some of these zones for the full 100% um, totality. That same goes for Carbondale there in Illinois, Mount Vernon, Illinois, down towards Harrisburg. Then as this crosses on over through far northern Kentucky, and that's the far northwestern sliver of it, that'll be around 202, 203, 204. And then once we start getting into Indiana, this is when we get into the time change as well. So this might be 3.05 Eastern time for you there into parts of um, Indiana, places like Bloomington into Indianapolis, just there after 3.05 Eastern in some of these zones, 3.06, 3.07, 3.08. Overall, the estimate here is we push through places in far east central I I Indiana. From there, we move into parts of west central Ohio. That's when areas there will begin to split like Dayton in th around 3.10 Eastern time. That's when you'll see that full effect there. Again, this is assuming there's no clouds. Keep that in mind. N north of central parts of uh, Columbus, there in Ohio, if you travel into the northern suburbs of town, that's where we'll start to see the totality there around 3, 11, 3, 12, 3, 13. Cleveland, Ohio, yep, you're going to get the totality sometime around 3.15 Eastern Time. That's when it's going to be peaking for you. Erie, Pennsylvania, right between 3.15, 3.20 Eastern Time. Then as we go towards Buffalo, Ni Niagara Falls, obviously a lot of tourists heading up there. 3.20 is your time, assuming it's not cloudy in some of those zones. Again, remember the totality is a little bit shortened here in the northeastern United States, but once you start to get through parts of far upstate New York here around 325 Eastern Time, I think you're going to really get out of the worst clouds, and I'll show you those in just a second. So into Vermont around 326, 327, New Hampshire around 328, and then on over here into parts of western Maine closer to 330 as well. It is looking like it's going to be great viewing conditions there, so if you have the means to travel into parts of central Maine, certainly looking like not a bad option there. Places like Holton, 322. 333, even lasting towards 334 and 5. Um, we've got that full effect getting going for you in that area as well. Now let's play out the infrared satellite and see who's going to be impacted by clouds, who will not be. First of all, I want to say down here in the parts of South Central Texas, I'm sorry, but it is looking like there's going to be low clouds and high clouds in place. So places like Austin, back down to Kerrville there and along that Mexico border, probably going to be very cloudy for the totality regions there. And we're probably even going to have some thunderstorms beginning to try and fire on up as early as the totality time around 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's not ideal there. Once you start to get into parts of Dallas, southern Oklahoma, southwestern Arkansas, I think in some of those zones of the totality regions, we'll at least get away with partly cloudy skies as we're kind of in between different elements of our system that's over here over the Midwest. And unfortunately, this complex system picked a really weird day to be here in the central United States because we are looking at, you know, different expansions of clouds, but the models are really starting to hone on in on them. And that's why, again, I think in places like Dallas, if you live in Kerrville or you travel to Kerrville, Texas, Austin, those areas, if you have the ability to maybe get going up towards Dallas just for the day and see the eclipse, might not be a bad idea. Probably have better chances there. Once you get on up in this band of clouds, I know it looks bad into Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana in the totality, but in all reality, these clouds, those greens, are high cirrus clouds. And to the east of there is where that actual low cloud front has moved. So I think some of these zones here are going to be in really good shape for seeing the eclipse with only maybe 20 to 40% cloud cover if the models continue to look like this. Again, we can still see changes as we get closer, but this is brand new data I'm showing you that's been coming in this afternoon. And through Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, looking like all the totality regions there should be just fine. 
Then you start heading to the east and you get back into some of those low clouds along that lingering boundary here. So Ohio, um, you know, West Virginia, even though you're not in totality, at least whatever percent you can see there are looking pretty cloudy. Pennsylvania and Western New York, it's also looking pretty cloudy in those areas as well. Um, even Detroit, Michigan, probably seeing some clouds, but it's going to be a very close call there. If I'm in Ohio, it's very iffy there. If I'm in Pennsylvania, probably cloudy. Western New York, probably cloudy. Once we get over here into parts of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, we're getting into better news because we're looking at some more of the high clouds there. That's what those greens are indicating. Say it again, in places like New Hampshire, in the eastern part of it especially, and there into Maine, looking almost fully sunny. So if you live in areas and you want to travel on up to Maine, again, safely, you know, be careful on those roads with a lot of people probably out and trying to head in the same direction. If you have the ability to travel from where you are now, get up there to Maine during the day tomorrow and on your Monday here. That's not a necessarily bad idea because again looking at that model blend here on pivotal weather you can see the national weather service model blend showing areas there in south texas pretty much a no-go for seeing the totality once you get on up there into parts of dallas and then towards arkansas that's when you start to get better with the cloud cover then as you head towards Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, you catch a break. Only 10 to 20% of the sky expected to be covered in clouds according to the model blend there. And a lot of that probably, especially higher clouds as well. Into eastern Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. The western parts of those states looking to be very cloudy as indicated on this map. And then once you get to New Hampshire, Maine, very clear. So that's the story of the eclipse. Now let's talk severe weather. As we head into our Monday, we're looking at a level 3 of 5 enhanced severe weather risk issued by the Storm Prediction Center for parts of north central Texas and into far southwestern parts of Oklahoma. There's a big slight risk that surrounds that here through a lot of central eastern Texas parts of the Arklatex region there into southern Oklahoma, including areas just south of Oklahoma City as well. We've got a big hatch risk, including the risk for two to four inch diameter hail and some isolated storms here. And in this zone, I'm circling as we go along a warm front that's going to develop in this region. We also have the potential for tornadoes, including places like Dallas, some of the southeastern suburbs. So let's kind of time this out using the HRRR model, some of the recent data from the afternoon run. You can see it through parts of Tyler and areas just southward towards College Station, Killeen, Waco, and areas eastward. Looking around four, five, six o'clock in the afternoon, that's probably when we'll see some of the storms really begin to turn feisty. Houston, could we see them initiate there? Yes, probably not turning severe until they're north of there, although you are included in the marginal risk. Could we see a tornado risk out of these storms as they move north? Yes, they'll probably can be converging with storms that are forming in that area. I just circled on screen and you can see that there. Once we get past sundown in the evening here on our Monday, we're going to have a lot of people probably staying in a hotel, you know, in places that they're not used to staying because of the eclipse. So keep in mind that you still need a severe weather action plan in place. So, you know, the lowest, most interior room of your home or building, you're, you know, if you're in a car, you need to know, have a way you can get alerts. So just in case these storms do produce tornadoes or very big hail, you can get off those roadways here late tomorrow evening here on your Monday. Going into our early Tuesday, still looking like some big storms into parts of southern Oklahoma, north. East Texas, southern Arkansas, and that leads us into another day of severe weather that we'll get Tuesday. We'll cover more of this in future video, I'm sure, but just taking a look at the overview here, again, the Storm Prediction Center's outlook goes from marginal all the way to a level 5 of 5 high. We do have a level 2 risk, probably more hail-driven once again here, through places like Dallas, all the way back down to Austin, San Antonio, now including Houston on Tuesday. Once we get to Wednesday, we've still got a 15% likely slight risk that just for the 15% percent means within 25 miles of a point. Storm Prediction Center already outlining the south central region for that potential of severe weather within 25 miles of a point. Parts of southern Arkansas, all of Louisiana, most of Mississippi, parts of Alabama, western Florida Panhandle, even eastern Texas. That zone I just circled on screen, that's where I wouldn't rule out the potential for this to maybe even go enhanced. Other areas as well could still go enhanced, so it's important to stay weather alert as we head towards Wednesday and even towards Thursday as we've got severe weather risks highlighted for parts of Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas, but I think we could even see this expand to include more areas as we get closer. So long story short, we've got multiple days of severe weather ahead. We'll cover those more in detail, but this was meant to give you kind of a look at the eclipse and a little bit of a precursor to our severe weather this week. If you want to get more updates in the future, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me in this evening edition of One Nation Weather. Have a good one.